Hello everyone, Sigmar7 here. Well, another month has gone by, and a month that I was able to celebrate my 30th birthday, as you all probably remember from that a video I just recently did. Um, I had a pretty good birthday for the most part. Um, you know, not much happened, just with friends and family and all that. And um, But I was able to get a few new um, films throughout this past month. Um, not a really huge haul this past month, because, well, I am trying to hold back a little, due to, you know, everything being expensive these days. But, um, hey, let's just go ahead and get started. Um, first up, we got the one DVD I picked up this month, and that is Angels in the Outfield. Most of you all probably know the 1994 Disney film, the one with Christopher Lloyd. Um, and yeah, that's the version I grew up with. But a lot of people probably don't realize that that film is a remake to this movie, which I have yet to watch, but I hear this one is far better, at least according to the reviews, which honestly doesn't surprise me. So, definitely can't wait to check that out. And here are several just miscellaneous Blu-rays I got. First up, we got Gifted, um, yeah, starring uh, Chris Evans. Um, I have been wanting to check this film out for a while. It seems like a really, really interesting, very wholesome premise. I've heard really good things about it. It's from uh, Mark Webb, the same director of Five or Days of Summer, which I still haven't seen, and the Amazing Spider-Man movies, which I have seen, which I was not a fan of. And apparently he'll be directing the live-action Snow White remake, which I'm not looking forward to. Then we got uh, In the Line of Fire, which I briefly mentioned in my top 30 favorite movies in 1993. I did get to watch um, past month for the first time, and really great political thriller. Clint Eastwood is great as always. John Malkovich is great as the villain. And yeah, um, Wolfgang Peterson, rest in peace. Um, not one of his better films, though. It's nowhere near as good as Das Boot, which that is easily his best film, so yeah. Uh, then we got A Serious Man by the Coen Brothers. Haven't seen it yet. I've heard really great things. I've Some people say this is one of their more underrated films, so I'll definitely have to see it myself. Then we got um, Spotlight. This was the winner of Best Picture for 2015. Again, haven't seen it yet. Don't know a whole lot about it. I know it's based on a true story, so... Yeah. Then we got Scene Street. Um, this is an Irish film. I've heard really good things about this one. I have seen this director's... Um, one of this director's movies once, which I absolutely loved, and I hear this is supposed to be his best film, and I heard he recently released a new movie this year that was released at the Sundance Film Festival. Um, yeah, didn't get a chance to see that, though, but yeah, can't wait to check this one out. Then we got Room, not The Room, Room, starring um, Brie Larson, but um, apparently this is based on a novel. I've, hear th I've heard nothing but good things about this movie, and I'm not a Brie Larson fan, but... I hear this is one of her better roles, so, yeah. Um, let's see, hold on, I'm trying to do this in a certain way. Then I got Creed 2. I was missing this for a while. Now I have all the current Rocky and Creed films, and I'm hoping to marathon them bef um, before I go see Creed 3, which is coming out this weekend. So, yeah, that. Then we got... Um, Okay, get ready for this. I got The Way, The Way Back, The Way Back, The Way Way Back. <laughs> uh, I, okay, I did kind of get these for that joke, but I've heard these are all great movies in their own way, um, especially this one, but can't wait to check them out. And by the way, the, This Way Back, directed by uh, Gavin O'Connor, who also so directed these three movies that I also picked this month. Got Warrior, got Miracle, and The Accountant. So, yeah. Uh, none of these have watched. I mean, I think I've seen Miracle a long time ago, so definitely can't wait to revisit that movie. Next up are some Criterions I got. I only got three Criterions this month. I got Eight and a Half by Federico Fellini. I have not seen a single movie by this director, and I hear this is supposed to be his masterpiece. This is a movie I see pop up a lot on favorite directors' lists. So, can't wait to see this one. Then we got uh, Blind Chance by Krzysztof Kieslowski. I'm probably pushing that pronunciation very heavily. This is from the director of the Three Colors trilogy, which I did watch for the first time this past month, and I absolutely love that trilogy. Such great movies. But, um, yeah, can't wait to check this out. I hear it's really good. And I definitely need to check out Decalogue, because everyone says that's amazing, too. And then we got Menace to Society, which I did watch this past month, because I mentioned it in my um, 
my favorite movies in 1993. Really great hood film that none of people talk about. All right, next are two new movies, and by new movies I mean movies that came out last year that got their release this year. Neither have watched yet, but I hope to watch soon. We got The Fable Men, Steven Spielberg's new movie. I definitely plan to watch this before the Oscars, which comes out on the 12th. Um, I just heard really amazing things, so. But yeah, can't wait to check this one out. And then I got Decision to Leave. This is the first Blu-ray release by the company Mubai, which is that you know I'm, some of you film lovers may familiar. Yeah. Some of you film lovers may know this company as, like, a, I guess it's like a streaming service that streams a lot of independent and foreign films, but I guess they're going to start doing physical releases like Criterion, which I hope that's the case. Have not watched this yet. It's by Park Chan-wook, the director of Old Boy, one of my favorite films of all time. I've heard of really amazing things. And I hear some people really pissed that this got snubbed at the Oscars, so, yeah. All right, got a few more here, some animations. First, I got the Mickey and Minnie 10 Classic Shorts. Um... This comes with, well, 10 classic Disney shorts, and I hope Disney starts doing this where they release their classic shorts on, like, Blu-ray and all that, because I know there was those, like, Disney treasure sets that are, like, incredibly hard to find, so I hope they start doing more with their other classic shorts. And then we got some anime here. First is this really, apparently this is an out-of-print anime series that I was able to find on um, Amazon for a really good deal, and that is um, Kassan. This is a really old anime from like 1973 i think is when it first came out i don't know much about it i've heard pretty good things about it um although i don't know if you can tell but the front here is kind of wrinkly so yeah that's unfortunate hmm. but then again it was like used because i think this is like really out of print hard to find but it's like a post-apocalyptic anime which already got my interest so yeah and then we got three anime films i got all distributed by g kids we got in you o which was nominated for Best Anime Picture at the Golden Globes, but it got replaced at the Oscars by The Sea Beast. So I haven't seen either film, but I'm just going to assume this one is way better. So, But yeah, it's from the director, um, Masaki Wasa, the director of Mind Game and The Nine of Short Walk on Girl. So I can imagine some really surreal imagery. Then we've got Goodbye, Don Glees. Don't know much about this one. I heard it got mixed to somewhat decent reviews, but I'm curious to see what it's like. I mean, it looks pretty based on the trailer. And then we got a recent release. This is an older, well, okay, by older, I mean this came out in like 2014, that finally got a physical release for the first time, and that is Giovanni's Island. Again, don't know much about it, but based on the premise, it sounds really intense, so can't wait to check this one out. And so those are my pickups of uh, February 2023. Um, decent amount, not as much as I usually pick up, sometimes I pick up more, but like I said, I'm trying to push, uh, hold back on buying a whole lot, because like I said, things are getting really expensive now, and I need to build up my account. So yeah. So, I don't feel aware of this, but March 7th marks the 10 year anniversary of my Heroes vs. Villains series, and I know a lot of you have been waiting patiently, or even impatiently, for the next round. I doubt, at the rate I'm at, I doubt I'm going to be able to get the round out by the 10-year anniversary, because that was the original idea. Life has just been so crazy lately. So, but I hope to have it out sometime soon, once I get things settled and all that. So, this is Ecomar7, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Later.